what does feeling crushed mean and feel like in poker? Is it like that you just can't read at all? You're being constantly pressured. You feel off balance. You try to bluff and the person reads you perfectly, that kind of stuff. Um, it's it's a this is a really really excellent question because I think this has parallels to a bunch of other things. Okay, let's just use poker as a microcosm to explain a bunch of other systems or games. Maybe it's um, running a company or investing. Okay, so let's use those three examples, but we use poker to explain it. What does success look like? Well, success looks like you have positive expected value. Right in poker, the simple way to summarize that is your opponent let's just say you and I are playing, mm -hmm. are going to make a bunch of mistakes. There's a bunch of it that's going to be absolutely perfect. And then there's a few spots where you make mistakes. And then there's a bunch of places in the poker game where I play perfectly and I make a few mistakes. Basically, your mistakes minus my mistakes is the edge, right? Mm -hmm. that's, that's, pure, that's how poker works. If I make fewer mistakes than you make, I will make money and I will win. That is the objective of the game. Translate that into business. You're running a company. You have a team of employees. You have a pool of human capital that's capable of being productive in the world and creating something. But you are going to make mistakes in making that. Maybe it doesn't completely fit the market. Maybe it's mispriced. Maybe it actually doesn't require all of the people that you need so the margins are wrong. And then there's the competitive set of all the other alternatives that customer has. Their mistakes minus your mistakes is the expected value of Google, Facebook, Apple, etc. Okay? Now take investing. Every time you buy something, somebody else on the other side is selling it to you. Is that their mistake? We don't know yet. But their mistakes minus your mistakes is how you make a lot of money over long periods of time as an investor. Somebody sold you Google at $40 a share. You bought it and you kept it. Huge mistake on their part. Minimum mistakes on your part. The difference of that is the money that you made. So life can be summarized in many ways in that way. So the question is, what can you do about other people's mistakes? And the answer is nothing. That is somebody else's game. You can try to influence them. You could try to subvert them. Maybe you plant a spy inside of that other person's company to sabotage them. I guess there are things at the edges that you can do. But my firm belief is that life success really boils down to how do you control your mistakes? Now, this is a bit counterintuitive. The way you control your mistakes is by making a lot of mistakes. So taking risks... You is, have to. Is somehow <laughs> you have to. You a way have to minimize to, the number of mistakes. Let's just say you want to find love. Yeah. You know, you want to find something Go that on. you're deeply connected <laughs> with. Yeah. Are you do you do that by not going out on dates and Yes. <laughs> <laughs> sorry. Okay, yeah. Sorry. You're I, gonna be sorry. the only person that thinks that's the answer to that no, question. No, I'm, I'm joking. I'm joking. No, but that's you know it. what I mean? Like you have to date people, you have to open yourself up, you have to be authentic and like you put you you give yourself a chance to get hurt. Yes. But you're a good person. So you know what happens when you get hurt? That is actually their mistake. Okay? And if you are inauthentic, that's your mistake. That's a controllable thing in you. You can tell them the truth, who you are, and say, here's my pluses and minuses. My point is, there are very few things in life that you can't break down, I think, into that very simple idea. And in terms of your mistakes, society tells you don't make them because we will judge you and we will look down on you. And I think the really successful people realize that actually, no, it's the cycle time of mistakes that gets you to success because your error rate will diminish the more mistakes that you make. You observe them. You figure out where it's coming from. Is it a psychological thing? Is it a you know cognitive thing? And then you fix it. So the implied thing there is that there is uh, uh, in in business and in investing in poker and dating and life is that there's this platonic GTO game theory optimal thing out there, and so when you say mistakes, you're always comparing to that optimal path you could have taken. I think uh, slightly different. I would say mistake is maybe a bad proxy, but it's the best proxy I have for learning. 
but I'm using the language of what society tells you. Sure, got it. Society tells you that when you try something and it doesn't work, it's a mistake. So I just use that word because it's the word that resonates most with most people. Got it. The real thing that it is is learning. Yeah, it's like in neural networks, it's lost. It's a neural network, it's lost, <laughs> exactly. Uh, yeah, all right. So you're using the mistake that is most, uh, the, the word that is most understandable, especially by the way people experience it. I guess most of life is a sequence of mistakes. The problem is when you use the word mistake and you think about mistakes, it actually has a counterproductive effect of you becoming conservative in just being risk averse. So that if you fo if you re if you flip it and say try to maximize the number of successes, somehow that leads you to take more risk. Um, mis mistake scares people. I think mistakes scare people because society likes these very simplified boundaries of who is winning and who is losing, and they want to reward people who make traditional choices and succeed. But the thing is, what's so corrosive about that is that they're actually not even being put in a position to actually make a quote unquote mistake and fail. So I'll give you, a, if you look at like getting into an elite school, right? Society rewards you for being in the Ivy Leagues in a way that, you know, in my opinion, incorrectly, doesn't reward you for being in a non-Ivy League school. There's a certain level of status and presumption of intellect and capability that comes with being there. Um, but that system doesn't really have a counterfactual because it's not as if you both go to MIT and Ohio State. And then we can see two versions of Lex Friedman so that we can figure out that the jig is up and there was no difference, mm -hmm. <laughs> right? And so instead it reinforces this idea that there is no uh, truth-seeking function. There is no way to actually make this thing whole. And so it tells you, you have to get in here. And if you don't, your life is over. You've made a huge mistake, you know, or you've failed completely. And so you have to find different unique ways of dismantling this. This is why, you know, part of what I've realized where I got very lucky is I had no friends in high school. I had a few cohort of acquaintances. But part of being so hypervigilant when I grew up was I was so ashamed of that world that I had to live in. I didn't want to bring anyone into it. I could not see myself that anybody would accept me. But the thing with that is that I had no definition of what expectations should be. So they were not guided by the people around me. And so I would escape to define my expectations. It's interesting, but you didn't feel... Um, like your dad didn't put you in a prison of expectation or we, cause like that's, if you don't have friends, like that, so the flip side of that, you don't have any other signals. It's very easy to believe like when you're in a cult that. Well, like, he, you know, he was angry. He pushed me. He used me as a mechanism to alleviate his own frustration. And this may sound very crazy, but he also believed in me. And so that's what created this weird duality where you were just, I was always confused about that. You, you could be somebody great. He believed that you could be he did. I somebody didn't truly believe special. him because I couldn't reconcile then the other half of the day, you know, those behaviors. But what it allowed me to do was I escaped in my mind and I found these archetypes around me that were saviors to me. So, you know, I grew up in Ottawa, Ontario, Canada. I grew up right at the point where the telecom boom was happening. Companies like Nortel and Newbridge Networks and Mitel, Bell Northern Research, these were all built in, in, in the suburbs of Ottawa. And so there were these larger than life figures, entrepreneurs, Terry Matthews, Michael Copeland. And so I thought, I'm going to be like them. I would read Forbes magazine. I would read Fortune magazine. I would look at the rich people on that list and say, I would be like them. Not knowing that maybe that's not who you wanted it to be, but it was a lifeline. And it kept my mind relatively whole because I could direct my ambition in a direction. And so why that's so important, just circling back to this is, 
I didn't have a group of friends who were like, I'm going to go to community college. You know, I didn't have a group of friends that said, well, you know, the goal is just to go to university, get a simple job and like, you know, join the public service, have a good life. And so because I had no expectations and I was so afraid to venture out of my own house, I never saw what middle class life was like. And so I never aspired to it. Now, if I was close to it, I probably would have aspired to it because I, my parents in their best year made 32,000 Canadian together. And if you're trying to raise a family of five people on $32,000, it's a complicated job. And most of the time they were probably making 20 something thousand. And I was working since I was 14. So I knew that our station in life was not the destination. <laughs> we had to get out. Um, but because I didn't have an obvious place, it's not like I had a best friend whose house I was going to and I saw some normal functional home. If I had had that in this weird way, I would have aspired to that. 